welcome to Last Cast. Um, today we're going to be talking about pipe traces. In fact, we're going to be talking about the equipment needed to make a pipe trace, and also we're going to make a pipe trace for you as well. Um, here are some of the tools, first of all, that are required to make that trace. We've got some real sharp um, wire cutters, we've got some crimpers, and we've got some pliers as well. And you'll see how we use each one of those stage by stage as we go through making the trace up. We've got some good quality multi-stranded wire for the trace. We've got some um, some treble hooks, these are semi barbless basically they're a three hook um, treble but we've only got one barb on there. That barb um, goes into the dead bait and it's just there for casting purposes really. The two barbless hooks um, are there obviously to hook into the pike. They really do come in handy um, when you get the fish onto the bank side because they make it really nice and quick to unhook. Um, also if it gets snagged into your landing net, we talked about that on the first um, episode, if it gets snagged into your landing net it's nice and easy um, to take those out quickly. It's all about getting the pipe back in the water as soon as possible. Um, then we've got some 30 pound swivels, we've tried to get the best ones um, that we could. You don't want to scrimp on swivels, they do take a lot of strain and these are really good ones. And um, uh, Lastly we've got um, some crimps basically just to keep the whole thing together and you'll see how we use the tools combined with the, um, the parts required and I'm just about to show you now how to make up a trace. Right we've just had a bit of a tidy up on the table um, and as you can see all we're left with are the essential items to make up this dead bait pipe trace. We've got the tools on the left, we've got as, um, as two treble hooks, as two crimps and as 30 pound swivel and obviously the important pipe wire. I'd like to start with this pike wire, you don't need to do any cutting at this stage, just pull a couple of inches out um, ready to put the bottom hook on because that's where we're going to start. This is £28 wire, it's a good quality multi-strand wire and it's always been reliable for us season after season. Um, so if you just first of all grab yourself a crimp, um, these crimps are £28 to £40 and the, the, what I suggest we do is we buy the crimps at the same time that that you buy your pike wire and the reason for that is because they're specifically designed um, to um, to mate up to each other once you've doubled up, up doubled up the wire and they just make the crimping nice and tight without damaging the pike wire so bob yourself, um, bob yourself your first crimp on there this can take a couple of minutes especially uh, if you haven't got a magnifying glass because it is quite tight but it's meant to be like that so grab your first crimp, um, bob that on and just leave yourself a couple of inches before you, uh, you, before you start with your first treble hook. Then get yourself a treble hook, it doesn't matter where the barb is, as you know there's only one barb on here but it's not really important at this stage. Just uh, thread your pike wire through the, uh, through the eye of the treble and then start to fold it over on itself and what you're looking for is to bend it in, in, back into, into the hole of the crimp and then just thread it back up, its, up, up within itself just leaving a couple of mil out of the other side. Um, then grab, 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 the, grab the crimp and then just start to tease the pike wire back on itself. You don't want this to end up too tight at the end and if you've got your uh, treble just, uh, just hanging like that nice and loose uh, you're in a good place and it's a good position for it to be in. If you go too tight you'll find that the, uh, the treble doesn't move and that's not where you want to be so leave yourself a little bit of play with a decent sized loop on the end just so that the, uh, the treble hook's got some movement in there and it just allows you to move this um, when you're hooking up your bait for fishing. Get the cables or get the two pieces of wire sort of parallel with each other um, as you're looking down the, the crimp because when you start to crimp it you don't want the wires crossed over themselves you need to crimp it so they both sit nice, nice and tight um, snug and side by side. So um, grab yourself obviously your crimpers Get them on there. Have a look at the have a look at the crimp and just make sure that it's going all the way through the um, the uh, crimping tool. Press down on the crimping tool, nice and firm, and then just uh, just re release the, the, the crimping tool and just have a look at um, at the crimp and just make sure that it's it's nice and tight there on the wire. I can see that it's um, it's it's crimped both wires side by side and it looks nice and strong. Um, a nice little test would be then obviously to grab your pliers, don't go anywhere near the up points because the needle's sharp and then just give that a, a pull for now. We're going to test the old rig once it's finished but that looks nice and strong and secure to me. And that's the bottom up in place. At this stage we need to pull out some wire and we need to go for about 19 inches of wire. 
Once we've got to that, that's the reason the ruler's here, but once we've got to that, we're just going to need to cut a piece off. So some nice sharp cutters, we've made a nice clean cut. Remember if you've not got sharp cut cutters, um, you'll not end up with a sharp clean cut and then you'll, you'll end up with it frayed at the end and it's difficult to get through the crimps as it is. If you make a nice clean cut with some sharp, some sharp cutters, it'll just make it nice and easy in the long run. So the next thing we need to do is just grab our second treble hook and this is our middle treble hook. At this stage you need to be thinking about what size dead bait you'll be using because you need to know where to put this hook on the trace and I'll show you what I mean. So thread it through, thread the cable through the treble hook again. Again it's no, it doesn't, it's no big deal just where the barb is. Um, we're, gonna, we're fishing with a dead bait of about 4 inches in length. So basically that's that's probably, we'll use our ruler again and we'll set that up. We know that this, this, this dead bait trace is going to be perfect for, uh, for fish up to about 4 inches. Once you've got that, thread, that threaded through the eye, if you just lock, lock, lock it back over on itself and back under the shank. And then keeping everything nice and tight, you just need to whip this lot around the shank. So about 4 or 5 turns, nice and tight. 1, 2, 3... Four, five, just as if you were whipping any any, any type of, uh, of um, float system or hook system on there. And then all you need to do is reverse thread it again, back through the eye, and just keep everything nice and tight, pull it tight, and we're 75% the way to making our trace up. Again, that's on there nice and tight, you can't go anywhere. We'll just check as measurements so we've got it perfect. And we're, going, we're just about to go on now to attach our swivel onto the end. So we've got the two hooks on there, they're both nice and secure. And finally what we're going to need is our last crimp. And it's the same process as the bottom hook. Thread your pipe wire through. Just leave yourself a couple of inches at the end. Um, and um, and we get, we're nearly in the process to pop this this last swivel on there. Um, this particular swivel is designed specifically for wire. Um, it's, got, it's got basically an oval end and it's got a, a, a round end and the round end is to attach your nylon or your braid to and the oval end is designed spe spe specifically for this wire. So if we just thread that through there just as we did with the bottom hook and we're reversing the loop and threading it back through the uh, crimp and we want the same kind of end result when we've got this crimp on um, as we did with the bottom hook so we're just leaving a couple of mil out of one side and then we're just teasing up this crimp and we're just making sure that the, there's some play in the swivel so I'm confident and I'm happy that that's on there nice and tight the cables again are parallel they're not crossed over and then we're in a position then just to crimp that down again. Check the crimp that it's in the crimpers perfectly. A nice firm squeeze on there. And then just check it, inspect it, make sure it's not over crimped. Make sure that the, uh, the cable's not crossed over and just make sure that the swivel's nice and loose. And there we have it folks. The first dead bait pipe trace. So now we've got our dead bait pipe trace out of the way, um, I'd just like to spend a couple of minutes talking about a trace for lures. It's very similar, the principles are the same, um, but you're going to need an extra component and you're not going to have any treble hooks because obviously the, uh, the treble hooks are attached to the lure in this case. So if you just start off with your, the, wire, the, the pipe wire is exactly the same, if you just start off with a couple of inches um, the, other, the only other component is a cross-eyed power swivel um, and this is just really a quick release system that just allows the angler just to change lows as the conditions may dictate. Um, so that's the only difference with this rig so far. So if you grab yourself a couple of inches of pike wire, um, you're going to need another um, you're going to need another two crimps and another 30 pound power swivel. If you grab yourself a, um, a crimp and just bob that thread that on there as if you were threading a needle. I'm doing okay with this because it can be a bit fiddly but I've got them all alright so far. 
Um, and just as you did when you were making up that dead bait pike, pike trace, um, you've got your, your little crimp in one hand and you're just going to loop it back on itself, um, leaving yourself just a couple of millimetres out of the other side of the crimp. And then just try and show that the pike, uh, the pike wires are parallel to each other inside the crimp. And then once you're happy with that, just ensure that the power swivel moves nice and freely so the loop's not too tight on the swivel. And then just get yourself your crimpers. And again, just as we did earlier, just inspect the crimp in the jaws of the crimpers and just make sure that that the whole crimp's been, been, been worked. Not too much pressure, pressure but nice and firm. And, um, and that's the, the, the quick release power swivel on there, nice and strong. Just as a double check, you could grab your long nose pliers again. And just give that a quick test. Nothing's moving, no, no, no strange noises. And that's, um, that's, that's perfect. Now distance, again it seems to be a gentleman's tail that we go back to 19 inches again so that's what we'll do in this case. We'll use a ruler and we'll measure out 19 inches. Then we'll get our wire cutters and we'll just snip the end off there. The next process is to get your second crimp and thread your pike wire through there through the hole of that crimp remember you're folding it back on yourself um, we're using um, we're using this this obviously this strong 30 pound swivel we've got the uh, we, we've got the little diamond then going on the pike the pike wire side first of all and we're just going to thread that back over on itself and reverse thread it back into the crimp. Leave yourself a couple of mil, just pull it up nice and steady and then just, just make sure that that swivel hangs nicely and rotates on itself. If you've got to that stage you know you've got it bang on. Just grab your crimpers again, just have a quick look that the whole crimp is through the, the tool. Press it down nice and firm then just visually inspect that those cables are parallel with each other and it looks like a really nice tight crimp. So the final stage is obviously just then to hook on the, the release mechanism. We're just going to bob that onto the lower. And keeping our hands away from those really sharp treble hooks, we're just going to use our pliers right at the swivel end in this case. And we're just going to stretch that and just make sure everything stays nice and tight. Yep, and that's another successful wire low trace for pike fishing. So now we've made us two pike traces up. Um, we want to talk about storage and obviously we're just going to do a final test on this trace before we store it away. We've talked extensively about pike safety. I need to remind you that obviously um, you need to keep safe with these treble hooks yourself and you need to store them safely. You don't want these just laying around in, your bottom of your, um, in the bottom of your tackle bags or boxes and you're getting your hand in there trying to grab these out of the bank side because they are really dangerous. So just before we pack it away, um, we'll do what we did earlier and we'll just uh, pop our pliers on the final swivel and we'll just give that a stretch and just make sure everything's nice and tight and that seems perfect to me ready for a day fishing um, what we've got here is we've got a rig tube very similar to carp anglers I suppose uh, for their rigs this is designed specifically for trebles uh, but you can use a piece of plumbing foam um, just to keep that, the, I think the main objective is just to make sure that the hooks are exposed um, and basically all you do with this is just pinning the hooks to keep them nice and sharp as well pin those hooks in there and then just bob the, um, the in, 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 inside spindle into its outer case and that just keeps everything out of the way 
everything's nice and safe from there onwards. And that kind of like brings this, um, this episode to a close. Next time you see us we'll be talking about pipe floats, we'll be talking about how to set these up and we'll be looking at individual pipe floats for individual situations at the bank side. Thanks very much and we'll catch you later on Last Cast.